dear friends dear friends today we are going to learn about anticoagulants what is the simple definition of anticoagulant anticoagulant can be defined as their substance which delay or prevent the process of coagulation of blood now how this anticoagulants can be classified it can be classified as natural and synthetic natural it is also called as endogenous anticoagulants synthetic which is also considered as exogenous anticoagulants what are the examples for natural anticoagulants example for natural anticoagulants most important are one is heparin another one is protein c so I repeat heparin and the protein c they are the best examples for natural or endogenous anticoagulants now what are the examples for exogenous or the synthetic anticoagulants uh most popular synthetic anticoagulants are edta sodium citrate double oxalate vitamin k antagonists now let us discuss about heparin heparin it is the first anticoagulant natural anticoagulant which is isolated from liver it is basically polysaccharide heparin is basically polysaccharide heparin is secreted by basophils and mast cells also heparin which is present in liver lungs connective tissue luminal surface of endothelium this heparin how it is destroyed how how it is eliminated from the body it's basically this heparin is destroyed by an enzyme called heparinase this heparinase which is present in the liver now uh, let us discuss about the mechanism of action of heparin what it what exactly this heparin does this heparin it facilitates the action of antithrombin 3 this heparin binds to antithrombin 3 and removes the thrombin from the circulation this heparin also inhibits the action of thrombin it inhibits the active forms of clotting factor number 9 factor number 10 factor number 11 factor number 12 now what is the clinical use of heparin the important clinical use of heparin is to prevent intravascular blood clotting this heparin is also used during dialysis it is also very much used during cardiac surgery during cardiac surgery what is the advantage of this the advantage is actually uh, during cardiac surgery there is a possibility of coagulation so it prevents coagulation during cardiac surgery now coming to the protein c it has got the it plays very major role in anticoagulation mechanism protein c along with protein s which inactivates clotting factors 
that is the factor number 5 and factor number 8. Protein C also activates tissue plasminogen activator. In short, we call it as TPA, which helps in fibrinolysis. Now, coming to the vitamin K antagonists. These are basically orally used anticoagulants, which include coumarin derivatives, warfarin, another one that is fenindion. Now, what is the mechanism of action of vitamin K antagonists? This warfarin basically it acts by inhibiting the enzymes that is vitamin K epoxide reductase and gamma glutamyl carboxylase. Vitamin K antagonists inhibit synthesis of vitamin K dependent factors like factor number 2, factor number 7, factor number 9, factor number 10. When warfarin is first started, the levels of protein C and protein S, they are basically anticoagulation factors which drop faster than procoagulation proteins such as factor number 2, factor number 7, factor 9 and factor 10. Therefore, bridging anticoagulation therapies are often used to reverse this temporary hypercoagulable state. Now coming to the mechanism of action of EDTA, sodium citrate, double oxalate. What is its action? How it acts? These agents has got the chelating effect on blood calcium. It will lead to the formation of insoluble complex with calcium which inactivates the calcium so that blood clotting is prevented. 